Hey besiegers, how you doing? Okay, a bit of a special one today, um, but we're just going to open it up with these Easter eggs, since it was Easter when I made this. But the idea was to experiment with the scaling, uh, scaling mod on Precision Builder. Now the scaling mod's got everyone divided. Some people think it's really great and they use it all the time and other people think it spoils the game. So I thought I would look at some uh, ideas that uses it, but trying to use it sort of um, very constructively. To begin with, if you look at the sides of those eggs, you'll notice that the, the blocks on them taper in towards the bottom and the top. Again, that was just rather than reducing the number of blocks on each level when you're doing a sphere, you just change the width of the block using the scaling tool. So that seemed to have a great effect. You notice though, it makes it an awful lot stronger though, because even these guys at the Midlands had a lot of trouble trying to kick through or break through. And inside each egg, there is three dragons uh, scaled up, because everyone's scaled today, and flattened down. And um, they're put to maximum thrust, and even they couldn't break out. Incidentally, they stand up. When you, when you scale them like this, when you shorten their length, they just stand up on their own once they're finished. Okay, so as you can see in the title, we're going to make some Katusha rockets, but how we're going to make them is a bit of a mystery, so I'll keep it a mystery at the moment. Um, what we're using here is the precision builder, but we're using the placement offset tool and the scaling tool together. So you can see I'm just using single blocks and I've stretched them out one way and condensed them the other. So it's like a quarter by a quarter and then, then put them into a circle at five degrees uh, placement offset, uh, um, rotate after placement. So there we've got a circle, all right? Now the circles don't complete themselves when you're doing like this. So we're just going to put a little staple here on the side, a little brace to make sure that it keeps its position, uh, keeps its, uh, its form as it falls. So just drop it to test it, make sure it's everything's going okay. And then we'll start moving things on. Now, as, as you can see, once we start to drop it, it keeps its shape, it just doesn't break up at all. It's very, very tough. Like I talked before, they pick up an extra toughness when you use the scale and precision builders together. And uh, you can probably guess where I'm going to go with that now. If you've watched any of my most recent videos, you'll know exactly what I'm up to. Uh, so I'm still addicted to them. And um, Okay, so now we have our circle complete uh, and it's time to start doing the innards. And for this, you need uh, the building tools by the guys you despise. Um, now, there is a, there's a, a mirror function, which I've been told and which I've used on this, which helps you duplicate stuff, stuff on the other side of any axis you choose. And it works perfectly, but I just keep forgetting to use it. I think I'm just so set in my ways. But next time, I will use it. But as you can see, I'm just using it the old-fashioned way here. I'm setting them up, nudging them backwards and forwards, using the various tools. I'm cautious nowadays to use the padlock. So I've got the padlock on when I don't want to upset or touch anything else, and then padlock off once I've finished moving my bits. So here we go. Same as before. We've duplicated it. Then you go to the uh, swivel gizmo and you spin them round and then you go back to translate and then you slide it back into place. And like I said, you really, I really should have used the, um, the mirror tool for that. That's the one with the white cube and the see-through cube. Um, it's, it is actually quite easy to use, it just takes a bit of practice. But this is another way of doing it. So, no great stress. Alrighty, so we've got some wheels in place and we'll just nudge them to and forward and, uh, until we get them exactly where we want them. Uh, and then we'll start firming things up. So once I'm happy, I've got both sets uh, sort of equidistant from the edge on the other side, we'll, we'll start getting right into the scale tool again. Only this time, what we're going to do is we're going to increase our stretch power by putting in uh, pistons, but we're going to flatten the pistons out. Now what happens is when you flatten a piston down, it still expands by one full block, when you hit H. So you can squeeze more pistons into a, saw, a smaller area, and then when you hit H, it just shoots right out. So you're getting more piston power um, per, per square inch or per millimeter, whatever you want. But what you've got to remember is wh when you've dropped them down to this kind of size that I have, they don't connect with each other, right? They miss the connection point. So you have to move it up two tenths of a block uh, so that it catches it. But you just keep hitting space bar, let it drop. See that those ones fell off the end. And uh, now I just nudge them up a little bit. And then the next time I let it drop, they should catch, right? And then so it's same on the other side, get in as many as I can. And that gives me maximum tension within the wheel. So another two in there. Drop it, away we go. So now we're ready to join them. 
Okay. <coughs> so hook them up with a couple of braces and you can actually see that the, the standard sort of um, tank tread piston um, assembly there, but this time with these very condensed um, pistons in them. And again, that's, that's what I'm trying to tell you today, is the scale tool is excellent, especially if you want to make really intricate stuff. It's okay like what I did with dragons earlier on, just making something times five and you've got a big object. That's one thing, but to make it so that you're starting to build like Swiss watch type uh, components, that's when it comes into its own, I think. Right, so there you go, look at that. It's absolutely perfect. And then you would never expect the wooden blocks to behave like a tank track in that way, and yet they do. Again, that's that strength that gets built into them. Put a couple of spinners here just to keep it on, but later on we shrink them um, into little sticks. So again, there we use the skill tool them to get them to behave and to look better as well. But for now, we're ready to go. We're ready to double that up. And then, like I say, the idea today is a uh, Katusha rockets, but we're going to use again. Going to use the scaling tool to get them to fit into the into the base of the tank once the tank's complete. So here we go. We'll double it up now. And again, should have used the shadow tool when I was building the whole thing, but I, I think it can be a distraction when it gets as complicated as that because you want to concentrate just on one one thing rather than where everything's landing. But um, you can do it either way; doesn't matter. Just take a rough guess at where you want to separate them out to and away you go. Now you've, if you've seen any of my tutorials before, you see I start all my tanks like this, pretty much. Get the two treads running in parallel, make sure I'm happy with everything. And then I join them up with some uh, braces at the end and it becomes a single unit. There we go, as long as you're not putting braces in the middle so it's got, room to, so it's got freedom to expand. Um, makes a nice solid unit, but it's very different, isn't it? Having a tank with wooden treads on it, I mean, that's something, it really is, and all that extra piston power. So it works really well. I've got it on normal speed here, but later on I turned it down to half speed because the, the, the wooden blocks are very sticky on, on the floor. So when you go to turn, it's, it judders a little bit, yeah, and when you change direction, it judders a little bit. I mean, that can be a good thing because it just it aids its climbing ability. But I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, so there's loads of room for making even more tank tracks uh, given using the skill tool now, so it's just great. I think I should go off and become a tank engineer, do you reckon? So it climbs up no problem. Not a problem at all. And uh, it's all keeping itself together. And, uh, we're quite happy with it. Um, what we're going to do now is we are going to start building the rocket units. Now I'll build it off to one side as you see and then move it into position, but we're just about to start that now. And here we are. Okay, so I, I, I've done this out of sight. Basically, I just stretched one of the rockets out to a couple of lengths and then narrowed it down to 0.5. And remember, 0.5 equals one quarter widths, uh, one quarter surface area, and 0.25 equals one sixteenth surface area. So you need to be careful when you're using your, your uh, putting your numbers into your scale that uh, you don't overdo it and end up with really, really skinny stuff. Um, but practice makes perfect. So yeah, basically what I did was uh, two swords, one rocket and one ballast at the back and then started copying that over because then it each forms its own partition towards the next rocket. So you don't need to put any more than two, uh, two blades on it. You see what I've done? And then just keep copying it, pushing it up, copying it, pushing it to the side. And in the end, you'll end up with a box that you desire but with however many rockets in it and just one set of walls will be incomplete, but that's easy enough to get around as well. Because you just, after that, once you've got the required number, which I think is about now, yeah, you just, uh, I'm sorry, what we're gonna do here is we are going to make a copy of it, right? Just painting it here, uh, you hold down shift and then just, run over it until it all turns green. This is in case I mess something up, because I'm quite often doing that, especially with the scale. If you put the scale buttons on and off, you can suddenly scale something that you didn't want to scale, and trying to get back out of it can be difficult. Uh, okay, so we'll just push that to the side, so we've got a safe little copy, but base, that's our basic unit. That's what we're going to be using. And we'll just slide it back in there, get it into position, just hovering a little bit. Now we've got to get the, the roof the, the top layer of blades onto it and the, the side wall as well. So 
again, just the same thing. Just highlight a bunch of them. Put your, I, I usually put the padlock on when I'm doing finicky work like that and then take the padlock off. It's a good practice. And then do it to the sides. And there you go, you've got your box. It's a corrugated box full of rockets. It's so easy. Right, so we put uh, braces on the back to hold all the individual units together. But you'll find because you've shrunk the ballast, the braces don't touch. Yeah, and it falls apart when you hit spacebar. So all you do now is you again just paint up the braces, get them all selected. Yeah, and then hit your translate button on um, the, the tools bar and then just move it in. Simple as that. Move it in a couple of notches and it should grip. Press the space bar, find out, and there you go. We're cooking with gas now, we're really gone. So the next one was to individually number and color all the the rockets. So they're all firing on different numbers, different strengths, or different distances, just to give it a bit of interest, because you don't want them all going out the same color, same time, same way. And then a quick test on the good old tower. And we're looking good. So that's our little um, Katusha on a, wood, a wooden tank track, which is um, I'm quite taken with. You see, notice how I've skinned up those swivels now for the for the track keeps at the side. So that worked quite well. This whole thing, start to finish, from a basic idea to finishing, took me an hour. So you can, once you get into the habit of it, you can start moving really quickly with these things really not difficult because you're copying and pasting up all the time it's really quite simple I'll have a go at the jukes and I, I mean the other thing is I could have made this much more elaborate I could have put all sorts of um, drive cabins on the front and I could have put a proper bed on it and made it look like a proper like say a modern ML, MLRS is that the multiple launch rocket systems that uh, they use and stuff like that but I thought we'll just stop it here for now and have a mess around with it. All those colours, ain't they? Fantastic. And every second here, I'll just start aiming the rockets up into the sky, and you can see them going off. No doubt you've had a lot of practice with them yourself by now, because everyone's gone rocket mad. It's one of the best updates we've had for a long time. There you go. But you can actually use the Katusha just to make uh, brave fireworks. It's not rocket science, it's firework science. There you go. It is pretty cool, though, isn't it? So many things we can get up to with these guys. Wow, just awesome. Yeah, it takes me a while to get bored with that. And I have got a few more ideas. In the next couple of videos, I'm going to be looking at firepower specifically and a few other tricks that I'll just keep secret for the moment. But um, what I did here was I attached, I put a spinner on the side of the tank. You see that steering block? And then just attached a camera to it so that I could spin around and just, because I hadn't used any cameras in this video up until this point. And I just wanted to sort of uh, bow out this one because I really, really should have, really could have uh, used them to better effect. It's used okay here. You get a nice sort of look at it. I love those pistons, the way they float like that. It's pretty cool. I mean, I could have sh shrunk them down to the were a pencil width as well. That would make them nice and neat against the side of the tank. But I did it like that so that you could see them more easily. So that's it. If, you, if you've been thinking of using the scale tool or if you've already used it, this is my take on it. Yeah? I, I, I finally quite like it now because I can make more complex machines. So it's okay. I feel really quite guilty about... Um, squishing those rockets. So they're only a week old and I'm already, we're already scaling them and modding them, but uh, that's how it goes, eh? Yeah, they look mad. They really do. That's about it, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to give me a like. Oh, it's always important if I get a whole bunch of likes on a video. Uh, it makes me happy. It makes me feel as if it's worthwhile. And um, if you haven't subscribed, well, there's loads more good stuff coming this way, so please do just hit the sub button. Didn't cost you anything, and you'll um, you'll get a little advance warning when more stuff's coming out. But until then, we'll just leave it there, and we'll just be shooting stuff off into the sky as we circle around. It's quite convincing, isn't it? It does actually look like like a proper Katusha. Yeah. Okay. See ya. Bye.